Does that kind of make you hypersensitive? You never wanted to disappoint. So you never wanted to disappoint the coaches or you never wanted to disappoint like your performance. Hi and welcome to The Real Women of Boxing, uh, Series 3, Episode 1. I'm here with the former GB boxer turned professional boxer, Tori Ellis Willits. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Oh, I tell you what, it's nice to be in a, a proper old school uh, boxing gym. Uh, we're in the East Side uh, Boxing Gym in Birmingham, where it all began. Um, nice to see you. Thanks very much for inviting me here. Um, what's it like to be back uh, with your amateur coach? Um, uh, yeah, it's the best, best, thing I've, best move I've made. Um, it's good to be back, you know. He knows me inside and out. And um, had he had his professional license from the start, I would have gone professional with him. Anyway, it was just the, the fact that when I left GB, it was still not had the license. So I kind of had to make that move because I wanted to get into the professional game and get started. So I didn't really want to wait around. Um, but yeah, I'm grateful to be back with him and do him. And uh, I'm happy. So. Yeah, nice. It's nice also, I think, uh, having been a, an amateur coach. I know, like, they're two different sports, but it's really nice, though, also to, like, I guess, to give back and then for the kids here to see, OK, we start here and look where I can get. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's, it's like an inspirational kind of thing for the, the younger generation um, to see like, what, what they can do. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's great. Boxing uh, 28th, 7th of uh, September. First title fight, Commonwealth yeah. uh, belt against Tizi Gallagher. Yeah, huge, huge. In such a short, uh, short time. Um, why, why do you think that women are able to kind of go for these belts uh, so early in their professional um, career? I didn't really. I mean, I could have carried on just fighting on small shows, building myself, having another year of fighting girls that I know I can beat, and just getting the rounds. But it doesn't do anything for me. I mean, I fought all around the world and had that sort of experience and I said, I mean, I'm 29 now. I wanted to get in there, get the titles, reach that level and then uh, retire, have, have an achieved more goal. So that's why I asked uh, to be fast-tracked and I said from the start when I went into professional that I want to be fast-tracked and I want to take these opportunities. I mean, there's, there's very little women in the division in Britain as well as like Will, so the, the opportunities are there to be taken. So. So that takes less time to build. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I think I think that's the difference, obviously, in the in the female and the male game. People always kind of think like you're almost like pushing yourself too quickly, too fast. Yeah, they've got to understand that you come from you know pretty um, you know decent uh, background in, in the amateur game, don't you? Yeah, I mean I've been in combat sports since I was eleven years old, um, from kickboxing transition to boxing. From like the age of eighteen, and I've I feel like I've been around it enough to um, to go down the fast track route and just put myself in the position and take take risks. I mean, um, I don't plan to be in a professional game a long long time um, because I've been in such a, for a long period of time. So I feel like I want to take these opportunities and do it whilst I can now. So you say you started um, you started was it kickboxing at yeah. eleven or boxing at eleven? So I started kickboxing at the age of eleven. Um, I was on Team GB for kickboxing uh, for years. Followed Chantel Cameron, who's a couple of years older than me, so followed her footsteps really. And then when she transitioned over, I was like, oh. So then I transitioned over to boxing, seeing that I could go down. I wanted to go to the Olympics and that GB route. Uh, the goal, my, my dream was to go to the Olympics. Um, and I mean, as an amateur, that's everybody's goal and dream. So that was my, uh, that was my ideal uh, plan at first. And then, uh, Going professional wasn't really in my mind because women's boxing wasn't really big in the professional scene. Um, it was only till like they took my weight out of the Olympics uh, for Paris, which I was aiming for. So I boxed at 52 and took that out, and then the goals changed. So um, I kind of thought, do I just stay on as a sparring partner or do I go down the professional route and see, change my goals and become a world champion? So that's what I've so going back to the beginning kind of thing, you, you obviously you won the two national championships, yeah, wasn't two, it? Uh, two senior elites. Two senior elites, you were uh, GB 
podium on the podium team for GB. So yeah, you won the so GB you two national titles, uh, GB uh, three nations, and then obviously you got loads of uh, international medals. So you were kind of on that route to the Olympics. Yeah. Remind me again which year it was that you know that you that, that they changed the weight the weight categories. Uh, I think it was 2021, maybe. It was like the year, it was the year after COVID. Right, yes. Yeah. So, so basically the, the Tokyo Olympics, <laughs> yeah. Tokyo Olympics happens, you think, right, I'm en route. Paris. Paris, here we come. Yeah. And, and to be fair, it, it kind of was a bit of a nightmare, wasn't it? That whole Yeah, so we situation. lost the year. So everybody on GB, we, like, we lost that year of like competitions, tournaments because of COVID. So that's, that also, I'm like, Kind of jeopardised a bit of the like selections and going to the world champ, like going to all these major tournaments to put yourself in a position for for that. And then obviously the weights changed, so that was a massive one uh, for me. Um, and then obviously th there was still the Commonwealth Games, yeah. so um, that instead of I thought I'll stay on for the Commonwealth Games, and that's my hometown, so that was a really opportunity, great opportunity for me. Um, and then. Month before the Commonwealth Games, they changed the weight in the Commonwealth Games. So I was like, the whole world just kind of like fell apart as such. Um, so yeah, that, that was probably like the most difficult. So I had to like, I was in a dark place. So that, that was like a really, really hard, hard uh, time for my, my career. I mean, you, you think the world's ending because I didn't even plan to go professional. Um, so then I couldn't stay on any longer. As much as like, I, I was grateful for the experience and everything I'd done. And um, I just, it, it was just like, oh, I can't do this anymore. Was that the moment you fell out of love with, with boxing? So you find out, obviously, okay, the Olympics, that's a no-go, but you're still aiming for this, uh, for the uh, Commonwealth Games. And, and like you say, in Birmingham. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I'm guessing that also you've spent so much time internationally, yeah. you're not able to show your family what you can do. No, my, my family hadn't been to one tournament since, I, since I'd been on GB. None of them had been to one tournament abroad. So it was like, this was like, they, they'd all brought tickets for the Commonwealth Games. So, and I was like, you need to get your tickets. Like, they're selling out. I was, I was doing media on me for the year, the whole year up to it. And um, everyone bought tickets. And I was like, so then to tell them, and some of them fair play still went because they had the ticket anyway. So they went and watched it and experienced it and uh, and still went to the tournament. But yeah, it was like having to tell everybody, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really going. It was, like, it was hard, really hard. Um, so it was, I didn't fall out of love for boxing, but I fell, I fell out of love for like Team GB. Yeah. That set up, being in that environment, being around the people. Um, like just didn't trust the trust for it had gone and for me it was like if I can't trust you then I can't be around you. Do you know what I mean? When you talk about when you're talking about trust, can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Well it's like a month before you're telling me the weights have changed. Like you don't know that. And I don't even like you don't know that prior before that and like just like selections and stuff like that and it's like how much more do you keep picking yourself up and keep been like so um it's not it's tough it's it's you think that it's the be all the place that everybody dreams to be but it is so tough mentally as well like to be in that environment where you're constantly pressured with your your weight and you, every spar is like you know it's it's really hard to um to, to just i don't know you, i've got a strong mindset and I've, I've been to tournaments of last and you go back and you could spin and but um, it was just not a tipping point for me. What would you say to people though that, you know, you get the opportunity to be in the GB setup and by the way, it's not the first time I've heard what you just said. Um, I've heard it from other people. Yeah. But what would you say to people that would probably think, you know, this is a massive opportunity. You get to, you know, be on Team GB. How difficult is it to be under that constant pressure? Oh, it's hard. Like people don't you don't realise because you go there and and like the co everyone's in that like watching eyes on you, watching you like you 
you won't go to a tournament because you've been selected. Like it's all on perform. I mean, everything's on performance. All on medals. So if you're not performing, you're not going to be going to anything. Do you know what I mean? If you're not on weight, if you've got to be weighed in every morning, and you've got, to, you know, you're not allowed to go above a certain weight, and it's just like all of it adds up, and it's it's quite it's difficult. Um, it's yeah, have to be, you have to be really strong minded. And you got to think your family's not up there with you. Your your coach that knows you inside and out, knows if you're tired, knows if you're like hot, oh, knows if you've got an injury, it doesn't really matter. Like, um, so you know, I think you're, you're in that environment constantly. You're basically on your own. Um, yeah, you've got your teammates around you um, and your housemates and stuff like that, but it's, it's hot. it is a hard life. Um, I think people don't realise who's on there. Um, but at the same time, it's great. You get to travel the world. You get to go to these tournaments, um, but it's like even if you win a tournament, you never really feel that sense of achievement because you you go into another one next month. You want to do you know what I mean? So yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. You win something, but it doesn't feel like you've won. Like you, you you don't really you don't even think take that victory in. Like you don't ever take that victory in because you're like that's not the goal. The goal is this. So you just bam 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 tournament tournament. It's interesting you say that because um, I uh, interviewed Cindy Nagamba the other day and she was saying that, you know, once she won her bronze medal, and, and in fact, when she's won before, yeah. she kind of had that mindset of, okay, and everyone's like, well, aren't you pleased? Aren't you happy? Yeah. Do you think that that's where that comes from, the, the whole GB setup, going to international fights, that like you've just said, you are then going on to the next one. It's like you don't really even have time to to digest what you've just achieved. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'd say like um, because you always and then obviously you fight one day and then you fight the next day and you fight the next day and it, um, so yeah, I think because you always like you always on that peaking and you're always going for the tournaments after tournaments, so. Yeah, that victory feeling isn't really like you, you don't uh, you, look. I don't really. I've been um, silver world medalist, beat Commonwealth bronze medalist, which is a great thing. And it's, but it's like it's not really. You don't really feel like you know, who am I fighting next? <laughs> but yeah, you're still looking. You're not looking at the increments. You're looking at the the kind of final destination. Yeah, which which probably which is the Olympic gold, Olympic dream. Um, I mean, I can't really say Cindy's. She's achieved that, and so, and she she's probably like, but she's probably thinking, I want gold. <laughs> yeah, so, and that's where she's not taking that bronze. She's thinking like, I've got four years now. I want to get gold next time. Probably that'd be my mindset as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I, I gather anyway, but I mean, great. It's great achievement for her. She's been on the been on the program for long, so. It's great for her to have achieved that. She's, she, do you know what? She's, she deserves it as well because she's been through a lot. Um, yeah. It's great to see that she, she won that. Yeah. I read somewhere or I heard somewhere the other day that even if you're not a particularly competitive person, if you're always in a competitive environment, it just makes you hypersensitive and competitive all the time. Does that almost put you on edge as well, talking about being a GB, you're having to weigh in every day. Does that kind of make you hypersensitive? You never wanted to disappoint. So you never wanted to disappoint the coaches or you never wanted to disappoint like your performance and you know, doing what you know that you can do, which in a sense sometimes puts more pressure on you, which means you, sometimes you don't perform to well, how you know you do and then you come back to like your environment where you relax and you chill. And then you perform and you're like, oh, if only if I just kind of need to do that, this or that, and look at GB, something like that. But I've been like, oh. but yeah, maybe, maybe that is because it's, it's a lot. There's a lot of things that you have to follow, and like, like say, weighing in every day, that's it's a, it's a lot for some people. Um, and you know, you're on the track and you're running against, and it's, it's all about the best efforts, um, which it should be because you get the best out of you. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I think when you're relaxed, you enjoy it more. So the enjoyment side of kind of gets drawn out of it a little bit um, more than more than anything, I think. I mean, it is, it is a job, and I, I often wonder 
how do people, don't get me wrong, I love training, well, yeah. not, not so much anymore, <laughs> but you know what I mean, I used to love training and you know, you love being in that bar environment and like you said, when you're in a, when you're in your home gym, it's the banter, it's the joke, yeah, yeah, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? But then yeah. as soon as you're in that environment, it's like, it's a lot. Yeah, it is, it, and I'd always, to like, I'd always like go to the speaker and put my phone on and like put my music on sometimes the coach like, well, get this rubbish off. But it's like that that helps me kind of relax, you know, like takes away that that little bit of like always on you, like pressure, like just a bit of music, chill, chill kind of vibe. I mean, I was on the army boxing team uh, before I got into G B and that was like similar set to G B but had that banter and that vibe and enjoyment and I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. So when I got onto GB part time, I'm like, yes, because I still get to go to the army, get to do my week training there. I mean, we still train three times a day at the army. And um, the setup is, is pretty similar to GB. They're like, they've got like, the, all their sessions are like mapped out, similar sort of stuff. So, but the environment, I love the environment. So I love going back. So when I got onto GB full time, I was like, I was like, oh no, like it, the enjoyment kind of did get taken away from it. Um, so yeah, that it is it is hard, it is, uh, and you won't understand until you, you're there. And you, you know, you know. Um, but if you know that your goals are to go to the Olympics, so you've got to deal with it. That was in my head. It's, it's interesting that you say that when you went to your army uh, club. It was chilled, it was relaxed, everyone was like, you know, running jokes. What do you think is the difference? What, what What's missing from the GB setup? Is it, is it, and I just wonder that, you know, this whole thing of camaraderie in the army, that, you know, you're trained for battle, aren't you? Yeah. In the first instance. Is there a, is that where the team building thing comes from? Yeah, I think so. There's a lot of team building like, in the army and like everyone's support. Like, you train hard, but like, like if, say if you've got that like, one more that left, everyone's like, come on, come on. Like everyone supports, whereas there's no like support if it's, there's no supportiveness of like the whole team. It's not, not a team, do you know what I mean? So like if, It's an I versus team. Yeah, or like me, you, one other person and then three other people, then two other people. That's like separated yeah. where it should be. We're all on team. I think maybe when you go to, like, when you're at like major competitions, it's more like it's, we're a team because we supported Team GB and we're all one, one team. But like even when you go to tournaments, sometimes I'm going, you're going, we're the same way. Yeah. So there's no team, it's still, you're in your, you're in your cliques. What do you think that GB could take away? Because I, I tell you what, when uh, when I was uh, coaching, right, and one of the things that if if one of you back in the day, uh, if one of the of the kids or uh, young people drew an army kid, you'd be like, because oh. you, <laughs> <laughs> you knew that they were going to be super fit. Yeah, like they're coming to you, just roll through you. Do you know what I mean? And until you knew you were going to have a hard fight, and as a coach, you're like, oh, man, and then you've got to help you game, do you know what I mean? And you're like, but there was that, that level of respect. What what can Team GB, I mean, are they are they the types of, is it the type of setup that would look around and go, you know what, I keep hearing this thing about possibly people being unhappy here. What can we do as an organisation to listen? I get, don't get me wrong. I get it's not supposed to be super comfortable. Yeah, yeah. But is what could they take? What could they take from? Uh, I think, the like, army? I think possibly making it more like team, like a team, and and getting that like team together um, and seeing the best out of everybody in that kind of environment. I would say. Um, yeah, rather than like it, it being like all about individual. But I get it, you are individual and you are in the ring on your own. Um, but like, yeah, possibly that. Or maybe a mixture of, of, of those things. I don't know. I, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just kind of thinking outside the box because to be fair, this is not the first time I've heard this. Yeah. 
And so if, if it's been said over and over again, at some point you'd have to hold a mirror up to yourself and say, okay, what are, what are we doing? What are we doing that's not working? There's, okay, we'll keep yeah. all the stuff that's... Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like a, if you've got a programme or, or, you know, you, your coach, um, Carl, will be working on something, go, right, okay, this is what we're doing today. This is a, these are the goals for the, to the, the today, yeah. for the week, etc. Surely they should stop and sort of have a look at themselves and go, what could we do better? Yeah, you'd like to think so. They're not like your home coaches, so you're not as open to like them. Do you know what I mean? But I, they they used to do like little forum things where you put in what you want to change. But that was only like towards the end of like whilst I was on, when I was on GB, so didn't really see much change. But um, maybe it's different now. I'm not too sure. Um, but I think they should be open to listening to people, what people have got to say, and how people are feeling. On the program, do you know what I mean? Yeah, a hundred percent. Going back to obviously the Commonwealth Games, you know, you're saying you felt cheated. Do you feel also that almost your family and your friends and all of those people that you, that kind of paid money? I just felt felt disappointed and and like let down by. I wouldn't say cheated. I would say more more let down and disappointed in in it. And I felt like I'd let down my family and friends. Because I told them, like I told more than them that, that I told them I was going and they all bought tickets and I felt like let down telling them I'm not going to be there and then like wasted all their money on a ticket. Yeah, so it was like hard to, to say like oh, I'm not I'm not going. Yeah, I, I can imagine. And you, you, so, so obviously you have to kind of brush yourself down and refocus. What did you do in that period between you know deciding to kind of. I guess decided to leave GB and, and yeah. um, turn over. I had to have a real big think of my future and what I wanted after boxing and what I wanted to do, like, like, like my career. What like I've been in the army, um, but I couldn't see myself going back to military work after being released on Team GB for the army. So I was in the army, but I was released on like a, um, a special athlete kind of program. So it meant that I could be on team, I was representing Team GB on the pathway to the Olympics. So the army couldn't drag me back to go to like do actual work and stuff like that. It's just people that don't understand the setup. So you join the army yeah. and you do the whole training as if yeah, you're going to be so a soldier. You joined, yeah, so you join, do, join, do it as if you're a soldier. You're going to join to be a soldier. You do your 14 weeks training. So in that 14 weeks training, I wasn't allowed to do any boxing. Mm. Um, that was a phase one. And then I went to phase two. Um, which you do your trade training, um, which you get a little bit more freedom in that kind of time, and you can go to the gym in, in the evenings yourself. And there was a little boxing bag, so I trained in the evening there. Um, and then you go to your unit. So when I was in my phase two, um, they obviously see me training in the gym and see me on the boxing bag. And I had a word, word with one of the, um, the corporals and. He seen that I was good and he was like, oh, I'm going to get in touch with the army boxing team, um, see if I can get your trials on there. And then as soon as I got to the unit, uh, I had a trial for the army boxing training team. Um, week down, I spent a week down there, uh, I was sparring Alana. The, uh, Alana. Yeah. Um, she, was, she was one of those. She, she, she beat me up. She, she was, was one of those. Everyone was like, oh, man. <laughs> I was <laughs> a couple of years later. I had like weeks out of training. I went to sparring her. I went to sparring Karen's art and stuff. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> and, Meg and Megan from Scotland. So the team was great. Yeah. Strong team. Um, so I went there and then uh, I had spent a week there. Left, went back to, to, to my regiment. And then I had a call off. They got the call through saying, Karen's is injured. Um, do you want to come? We're going to the oh, no, the box squad. We'd like you to come and take that place. So I went at 57 for that carrier. Won bronze and then they were like, we want you on the team full time. So then I joined those and I was looking up to uh, Alana. Alana was who I looked up to. She did oh, great gosh. things and she was great. Like, she was great, tough and real good role model to look up to. So I looked up to it. Alana was on the team. We all went into the elite. So I went in as the underdogs so, because I was only just turned boxing about a year or two. Um, and that year, me, Karis, we, and Natalie Nguyen, we all would. So it was like, we did 
the, the army team did brilliant. Um, on the army team, um, which is like a full time setup, you live in older shop. Basically, you wake up, you run, go to do different running sessions, then you go back to your block, um, you go back to your boxing session, and you go back, you can come back, go eat, strip, and so it's like, like the GB setup, pretty much the same. And then um, you go to the they have, like, really, I don't know, you've been to them at the army shows, yeah, I've been to army shows. I haven't been to an army show. I've been to older shop though. Yeah. So the army shows are great. They have the drums out and then you walk out and you have like the fireworks. Their shows are great. Wow. Yeah, really good shows. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I was on there. But then those that are, so when I'm on the elite, so certain athletes in the army can, if they're on the pathway to the Olympics or like that kind of GB, team GB, there was only like seven at the time on it's like a different sportsmanship, um, scholarship kind of thing. And uh, me, Karis, Mega, we were all on these on this um program. So Mega went to Scotland, we went to Team G B and it meant that they couldn't draw us back into work because we were on this separate uh, program. And I was quite lucky because I was getting paid from the army and I was getting paid from G B. So I was you're in big I was in the G B <laughs> because the wage on G B isn't it isn't great. Like okay. it's not great wage. Um so I was living quite good, like quite good. I was I'd save money, I'd save, 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 save. I bought a house. Wow. Like, yes, because all I did was save, save, save. Didn't go out partying, didn't go out drinking. Went home over the weekend just for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, chilled. Lived at home at the time, and I just saved hard, brought my own house, and um, got on the property like this. So it was, it's, it's, it it's great. So then, when I, so when I made the decision to leave Team GB, I had to take into account what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do in my future do i go back to the army but if i go back to the army they don't support you go they may do now but they don't always depending on your regiment support you going on a professional route i'll, I'll probably get dragged into doing work and going uh, here there, and over there and i won't be able to focus on being a pro where well, we were talking about the army and what you were going to do afterwards because to, to me it looked like there was a clear pathway to go back into kind of settling back into the army but like you say you wouldn't have been able to compete yeah in my like i think because i didn't achieve what i wanted to achieve in the boxing world through amateurs i felt like my career was not like it's not finished yet so that's why i decided to go down the professional route because i uh, haven't achieved my goal and my dreams and my goal in boxing changed and it went down the route like titles winning and becoming a world champion so that meant that my my pathway had changed from like amateurs to, to professional. The the jacket's not gonna work unfortunately, <laughs> but yeah, carry on. So you, you basically you've left Team G B. Yeah, and I had to put have a little bit of obviously boxing's not forever. Mm. I'm coming getting older and in my head I'm like, I've got to have a backup plan in case this doesn't work. I've got to work so I need a backup plan. I mean in my head I was like, Do I just go and get a job at Audi is it then? part time and then I could focus on boxing at the same time but then I was like so I go down and do something that I want to do after boxing anyway and I've always wanted to be a PE, pro, a PE teacher so this job opportunity came along and I got the job and I thought no this is my whole life's gonna change so I was, every kind of all changed like I was nervous I had December off to just chill and uh, come back home like I went on holiday to Mexico and partied and a bit of downtime away from boxing, just just till I figured out what my next step stage was, stage was going to be, uh, and then I started my I started working full time in January. My first week at work, um, on my Friday, I remember ringing my mum like, "This is what it's like to work." <laughs> I was like, "Is this what the real world?" No, no, no. Is this just the real world? I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. So she was like, "Yeah." I was like, "It's normal to feel like this on a Friday." I was like, oh, "Come on, God." Um, so, so when I left, I turned, ended up turning professional with uh, Max McGrathen. I thought it would be a good idea. Being Birmingham based and people said, like, obviously, Rob, Max, what is going to be because I'm from, from GB, I thought it would be all right. Um, did, did my first year with, with Max. And the more I got into the, my career, and, like I know that there's like, up, then you just need to fine tune in because I'm already at that level. Where it just needs to fine tune in and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, towards the end of my first year, the relationship was like breaking down. It wasn't. 
I felt a little bit like it was like the environment of like when I was at GB, like tr the trust. The trust just, it was like it, money sign more than anything. Like when what he, he did, like he, like not, whereas you, the relationship with your amateur coach, like that kind of trust is completely different. It is, well, I mean, and, and, I, don't, and I don't know what transpired, but I, I know from being an amateur coach, we're there for free. We, yeah. we, we do the job for free. And I guess from the point of view of a boxer wondering what our intentions are. Yeah. And I'm not saying that all amateur coaches are pure. No, so, no. Trust me. But the intention there is usually to yeah. just assist people, to assist young people. And to be fair, we get a lot out of it as well. To see a young athlete develop is an yeah. amazing thing. But do you think also that you were slightly more attuned because you were saying that you'd lost your trust at GB and then yeah. all of a sudden this situation with uh, Max Shaw. Yeah, I think like the start of it was like the honeymoon period and like the training was like, yeah, this is great. Like, it was more like the sessions were just like graft sessions. Not, and I mean, I'm a workhorse, so put me in the time to do it, I'll do it. But it was more like the point where you realise that, oh, what do I need? I'm not ask I'm asking the coach, well, what do I need to work on? What do I need to improve on? And it's, you're not getting the answers. Then it's like nothing getting better, like nothing's changing, you're not developing, you're not changing. So those sort of things started to show through. And with me, I know from being with Carly, it's like he's like a perfectionist, literally a perfectionist. So I know that there's always things to work on, there's always things to improve on, and there's always what you want to work on. I would always go to GB in the week, have sparring videos, and I'd send them to Carly. So what should I work on? What should I do? What should I try to do? Like I'd had that for years. So when I went to Max, it was like I'd asked that question. It was, it, there was no answer given back to me. Towards the end of it, it was more down to the point of I was like, I need to spar better girls than just like local girls. I need to go travel, get sparring. Like I'm not getting what I need here. And I was asked to go spar Shannon Ryan up in London, and I thought it's a great opportunity. Like I'm I'm starting out my career. I need to go spar these girls and get around. So I went down and I, I wasn't wasn't getting paid for it. But I didn't expect to get paid for it because I was just, I'm new starting out. Yeah, I've come from GB and done that. But like, not you start from the bottom again in professional ranks, which I, which unless you've got an Olympic medal, you start from the bottom again. Well, you are because you know how fickle people yeah. the industry is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I felt like I had to build myself again. It, it, so I can't, I can't ask for somebody for money to go sparring when. It's going to benefit me anyway. Yeah. So in my head, I won't, but the money is irrelevant because I've got a job anyway, so I'm, I'm earning my money through that. So this is just to build me, to build my experience, to, to better me. And he didn't come with me. Any travel sparring, like he, anywhere traveling wise, he wasn't willing to come with me to sparring because I wasn't getting paid for it. I was in Shannon Ryan's camp for her fight. I think it was the Jasmine one. For two months straight, I was going to London on the train. Didn't come with me once because I wasn't getting paid for it. Happy fight with a dangerous fire, everyone always says that. And I wasn't happy. And like, for me to give it even like go into that environment where Shannon Ryan's a quality fighter, do you know what I mean? Somebody else is dead on my own, nobody with me. I just think it's bad, like a bad as a coach to allow your fighter to go and do that, like put your fighter at risk. I wonder if I go there, I get concussion and I'm stuck in London. I mean, is it difficult though? And, and, and this is just, this is not a defence by it. It's just, I'm trying to look at it from a different point of view. Is it difficult for some coaches that just don't have the team to be able to go off and maybe leave their gym in the hands of somebody else? And, well, uh, no, but it's not his, it wasn't his gym and he's only got three or five Right, right. So he could rearrange timings and stuff them for when they get back because he trains everybody individual anyway so it could, could have been trained individual and just done them a child timing so no i don't think so but it was lucky that the, the environment like coach g and that and one of the lads from camden he cornered me so i ended up being a bit like part of the furniture one to, <laughs> when i went in you know i mean i knew shannon ryan from when i was in kickboxing so yeah so we did kickboxing together when we were younger so we were on the round corner setup so i knew her from them days anyway so she's from birmingham no, she's from London, but 
we went to oh, competition. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I knew her anyway, but I hadn't met a coach. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad going like, because I already I knew her. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was great sparring, great rounds. They wanted me back for more because they were like, this is what we need to push Shannon. Yeah, I really enjoyed doing it. It was, like, I was just happy. I knew that because I wasn't getting fights through fights or anything because they stay on making me when they didn't sign that sort of contract. I was like, well, I need to, that if I can't get fights, then I've got to go and spy these girls. Stay. So just let's go take it back a little bit. So you did sign when you first turned over with fights then? Yeah, for a year. And, and that was for a year. Five fights for a year, yeah. yeah. And so you got the little five fights for the year, and then was the situation going to be then looked at the end of those five? Uh, so were you going to be released or were you? Well, no, so they, they said, we've got you a fight, we've got you a title fight, but you got signed for another two years. And I was like, no. So then I was had four or five months left. So I had to see that contract out. But in the end, they ended up Lee and managed to sort it out. So they released me like two months earlier. So then I got released two months early from fight zone. And then I wasn't with them for You didn't sign, you didn't sign for the second term. But no. in, the, in the first term, you literally were just basically sitting on the sidelines. Is that what you're saying? Well, I had four fights. So got, they got me four fights, got paid for those four fights. But it was like, the last one was like, it's like, it was title fight, but you've got to sign yeah, for that I understand. period. I understand. And I didn't really want to be tied down into anything. I, I just thought, I want to go and get the better right now. And to be fair, it, in this day and age as well, we've seen over the last few years that how the women's scene has really developed on yeah. the professional scene. And this is about also money and about legacy yeah and it is about doing as much as you can in a short space of time i'm sure most people would weigh up their options and yeah. make a move somewhere else i mean i don't think there's yeah. anything wrong with that yeah i think so as well and i think to be tied into two years is a long anything could happen within i mean look at this now it's second my second year and i'm, I'm fighting for titles now Big title in the which will be shown on the zone. It's would I, if I'm signed for that two years, would I have got this opportunity? No, I wouldn't have. I don't think. And the thing is, I think sometimes when you come outside of your comfort zone, maybe that's how can I put it? Maybe the situation with Max, you coming out of that situation, you go in sparring in London, your eyes are wide into what yeah, else is yeah, going that's, on. Yeah, and different coaches and being yeah, that's what has that happened. So it's like being around different coaches and how. Me seeing how Coach G treats and Shannon and like that just then opened me in my eyes and seeing what training he's doing, what he's working on. It just it did really open my eyes up and it through that period and and then I went to go and went up to Spa Raven Chapman as well. So then I was went there on my own and I uh, joined in with their SSC, I had to be sparred and see my relationship and it was just like it just did open it did open up my eyes massively and I mean I'd always have gone with Carly that is I had his license from the get go and that's when I, I got like back in touch with them. Uh, I've always stayed in touch with them but then that's just this, I just said oh, I'm not happy would you take me back and will I be able to kind of turn professional with you? People talk about especially in the amateur scene and I, and I get it in the amateur scene about this whole loyalty thing but I also get on the flip side that Especially a club coach, a club coach in amateur and certain coaches and professional can only get a fighter to a certain level and then you have to go, okay, well I've done my bit. Mm. It depends if the coach is sort of, he's, he's trying to better themselves and improve themselves. If they're doing their homework and if they're doing their study and like I know Carly watches boxing every morning at five o'clock in the morning while she's working out. So he's working on things to then work for his fighters to go and do. So he's, so I think that it depends if you want to coach that's like set in the ways and just this is my way or no way, like this is how I train, this is what we're doing. And there's no them they're not gonna better themselves, are they? So they're not gonna better the, if they're not better themselves, they're not gonna better their fighters. Whereas I know Carly he's always he's always trying to do study and do watch different things. So I know he's then putting that into practice with us in the gym. So it's like, I think if you depends on what kind of coach you are, if you set in your ways and which is what Max was because it was like that was this is the fight of it and that was it kind of thing. I mean, I just think that it, you make mistakes along the way and maybe it was a bit of a rush move decision for me to do I haven't after just leaving G B 
I think I was hungry to just get into get my pro started, my professional career started. I was like 28, wanted to get it started, so I can get in, get in there and get it going. But yeah, live and learn, don't you? The pro game is a completely different setup, isn't it? It's a completely different setup. But the positive take from this, what sort of improvements have you seen since you've been back here with Carl, just mentally as well as physically? Low, like my boxing IQ is just leveled up massively. Like I'm doing things, pulling things off that are quite like high level and just from He'll send me things that may or whatever I say, but little people may or whatever, like certain like combination or whatever, and I'm like, like I'm pulling it off myself. So everything all around it, like one of my one of my attributes is my energy. So I could just go at you for ten rounds if I want to just go at you. But it's been smart with it and cute with it, and like, like developing. Your, I've got that back box and also amateur at top level. It's just fine tuning it all, and I think the more. Now that I'm back with Carly, like everything is fine tuning and like falling into place nicely. So, yeah, so that's one massive positive. On the 27th of September in Sheffield, you are campaigning, like we said, for the Commonwealth uh, Super Bantamweight title against yeah. uh, Tizi Gallagher. She's a British champion as well, mm-hmm. is she not? I saw the, the kind of face to face. Yeah. Got a little bit spicy. It got a, a little bit spicy. I think she told, you told her, I think, that. You were too uh, strong, too clever, and she said that you were chatting uh, rubbish. Going back to this kind of uh, amateur career, that whole setup in GB, all the lockdowns, do you think that mentally as well that you've got a little step up because of everything that you've been through? Yeah, I think so. I think I think she's half underestimating me, but I also think that like. I've been around the block and I've been put in front of, I've had Olympians, Spartan Olympians, like, you know, I mean, the level where I've like the Russians, like, everything, any kind of style fighter, I've been there and I've had it in front of me. So I don't feel like there's anything that she's got that I can't deal with. So in my head, I'm like ready for it. But also everybody talks about the- physical and the, and the yeah. technical and, and I, I guess at this stage everybody's going to be fit everybody's going to be at a certain level and she's obviously proven because she's carrying the belt yeah. both belts but how important is the mental aspect of going into a title fight I think it mentally in, well in any kind of from GB as well like just the mental side of thing having to deal with everything on that it's like a journey itself, it's ups and downs, ups, downs, ups, downs. That's like a roller coaster itself, just being on that. And I think it, it puts you in that mindset of, I've been knocked down and back up, been knocked down and back up. I don't, I don't fear losing because of the, my journey on GB. Like, you go to tournaments and you're in a tournament, every person that is in front of you is just as good as you because the level's like, the level is up there with that standard. Every fight is like, such a close fight. It, you lose, you win, you lose, you win some, you lose some. And I think I've dealt with that for years. And it, I think for the mindset, it puts me in good stead for the professional side of things because a title fight, like the camp, don't get me wrong, every camp's hard and title fight, this camp's been even harder. This is probably in the hardest camp of my professional career, but it's going to make me stronger for the night. It's interesting that you said this is one of the hardest. And thank you for sharing that because this, this is real life yeah and i understand that sometimes people have good days and bad days and uh, just going off on a tangent the, the whole sparring thing always makes me laugh because one day you could have a great spa in yeah. a camp and the other day you might not have a great spa does yeah. that make you a really terrible boxer <laughs> do you know what i mean no you have to take into account as well when you're doing that then you're doing this you, you, you're training towards the day your body's tired you're putting through the heart and hurt knockers so not every day is going to be i mean i beat myself up when it's not every day but you are just got to it's just the, the journey and the, it's how it's going to be a walk in the park. And the discipline that you must have gotten also from your army days, having to get up, again, being in that setup of getting up the regimental thing of running in the morning and then yeah, you have a rest and then surely all of that, you know, do you think that those are tools that perhaps Tizi is uh, missing from her toolkit? Yeah, I think I'm just accustomed to it. I mean, you just do it. That kind of mindset, it's the army mindset. Like, you just do it no matter what. 
uh, get it done. And, yeah, you might moan about it, cry about it, but it's like, yeah, quick, tired, not like days in the gym where you feel down, whatever, but it's just get on with that, get on with it mindset. I think that's that tough mindset from the army is like, just get up, get on with it. <laughs> So when she's saying to you, you know, basically that you're chatting shit, did you see any kind of, because it's all very different, isn't it, saying the words, but can you, were you able to read anything? Were you able to see any chinks in the armour? No, when, when, what I seen was when uh, Adam Smith was in, I just said, oh, like you've got nothing that I've not seen. And Adam Smith was like, how can we know going across each other on the uh, amateur side? I says, never heard of her on the amateur side. She wasn't out of so she's, Never seen, never heard of her from, from that kind of side of it. I says, and I've been, and she turned around and said, It's because you're older than me. I was like, I'm only like two years older than you. I said, You'd still be known on, on the circuit if you was out there in the amateurs and on that level. And uh, she, and then I'd have asked her some girls and she went, And like, her, she lost the four, train of four. So for me, it's showing a little bit like, but like she's a little bit lost for words, do you know what I mean? And a bit like, yeah, a bit like story. Um, was that kind of a, you know those moments when you go, oh, that was mine, I won that one, I won that exchange. 100%. I mean, she, like, she says she doesn't know me, but but then, uh, I don't know, like, it was just some of, some of the things she said, but you, well, you didn't know me, but you clearly don't, like, you clearly do, do you know what I mean? Because any fighters, you, you know all fighters. If you're a female fighter, I mean, I used to know fighters, I'd go to a tournament, and I'd be like, oh, to my friend, about, oh, yeah, you're boxing her. She, that's that, she boxed her. Oh. So, don't act dumb and say that you don't know, don't know me, never heard of me because you're full of shit. It's interesting because I felt like I knew you because I've been following your career yeah. for years. So, uh, definitely for you on the amateur scene, it's not only your job to know who's who, uh, yeah. but you do know. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Not just by default, you know yeah. who's who. 100%. So, I think just that's she's just telling shit, really. What makes it exciting is the fact that you come in, what are you now, 5-0? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've come in at a 5-0, and o, so you're relatively early on in your career, but like we said, that whole uh, taking the chance, yeah. grabbing it with both hands, yeah. I think that's what's going to make it an exciting fight. Yeah. I think you've got to take the chances and I can't wait around for a while. I don't want, like I said before, I don't want to be in a professional game a long period of time. I want to i go and enjoy a bit of my normal life. So I want to take these chances and I want to climb the ladders. So I think if I hadn't have called her out, I wouldn't have got the opportunity. So it clearly shows that it works. If you speak up a little bit, might get a little bit of hate from people and stuff like that, but are from like keyboard warriors, that people that don't know nothing about boxing. However, it put me in a position where I'm fighting for a title. So was it, winning? was it a case that they feel like you were I don't know, how dare you call someone out yeah. because you've just and reached. Yeah, that, that's, what it, that's what it's coming across. Oh, you're not experienced enough, you're not done this, you're not done that. But it's, it's got me the opportunity and I'm fighting for a big title on the 27th and I don't feel like I've, I'm inexperienced because of my pedigree. And yeah, professional game's a little bit different. However, you fought the best of the best, so why not go down the professional route and chuck yourself in the deep end and see where you can come out with. But also, you must have seen your GB mates yeah. and succeed. Yeah, that's what I was saying to Adam, that's what I said to Anne Smith the other day. I said, if you look at it, you've got Carish, you've got Raven, you've got Ellie, Scotney, you've got Lauren Porch, you've got Carolyn with the block. I trained with all of those fighters and look what they've achieved. Look what Ellie's achieved, look what Raven's achieving fighting against in Saudi Arabia, in, in Scott. All these girls, I've mixed it with them. And I'm at that, I know that I'm at that level because I was on the programme with them the same amount of years. So why, how, like, why can't I go and put myself in a position and say, I'm ready for these titles? Because all these girls that I've been with and for years training with, are, have either achieved it or are achieving what I'm, I'm saying I want to achieve and I'm going to go and achieve. It's interesting because obviously then they're the mezzanine stick for you. Because, like you say, there was a time in the sort of pro scene, the female pro scene, that there was such a wide gulf between the very top and, yeah. the, and the bottom. And I, and I still think that's the case in some, to some degree. But that that little space is now inside. But then you get that yardstick of going, okay, well, this one and this one are doing that. I mean, I could get in the mix. Yeah. And I think also, 
you turned over just the right time when everything started. So you let those first crop get out of the way and then this next sort of phase, mm. I believe is such a, you're in the mix of a, such a great group of women. Yeah, I think it's great. I think the, the pool of the female fighters now, the standard and the level is like there. And which that standard are all the girls that have left the GB. So if you look at it, like in a sense, it's like that's the level that everybody is at now. And that's great to see because the fights are better and it's, the standards better. So that, that makes it even more exciting for female fighters and female um, boxing because you know that the fight's going to be even better to watch rather than just like watching like rubbish fights that shouldn't be getting the credit that they're getting but they're on TV but that's because us like have a transition through to the uh, professional it's great to see all the girls achieving what they're achieving in the pro professional ranks as well like it's brilliant so you, you've, you've obviously mentioned some brilliant people there Ellie yeah. Scottney Lauren Price I was going to say Chantal Cameron you didn't mention her but we'll mention her as yeah well, well she was on a TV set up but she was she was on, she was on, she, she'd left and got, she'd turned professional. Sandy Ryan. Caroline yeah. Dubois. Yeah, San, I mean, Sandy Ryan's fighting Michaela Mayer. Yes. Brilliant fight. I was going to say, so, yeah, you see all these, you see all of these girls mo making moves and do, you're in absolutely fantastic company. Talk to me about the sort of Sandy Ryan Mayer. What do you make of that fight? I think Sandy Ryan's going to beat her. I just think that she's too, she's fresh. Fresh fight, and Michaela Mayer doesn't do anything different. I don't think she ever adapts in any of her fights, and I think Sandy Ryan's got the best of both. She can fight and she can box. Whatever, whatever Michaela, well, you know what Michaela Mayer's going to do, so it's standard. But as long as Sandy shows up on the night and does what she does best, she will fight victorious. And I think that Michaela Mayer is just looking for, for, for payouts now, in all, honesty, in all honesty. And I think. Sandy Ryan's only getting personally. She's growing into the weight of violence. She's looking quite strong. Do you think that move to the States has done her the world of good? Yeah, I think it just levelled her up, her mindset, um, that hunger as well, being away from, from family and just focusing on just so, like the end goal. I think it's done a great. Yeah, I mean, she's got the, Kay Korn as a quality coach. I watch his stuff, I watch his stuff from home. I'm one of these people that watches takes in different things from different people and so I think she's in with a, she's with a great team and I think it, yeah I think she'll be victorious on the I think she's become such a well-rounded boxer and I feel yeah. like there's so much more it just feels to me like there's going to be so much more to give we just yeah. haven't seen it all yet and the same with Ellie Scottney as well yeah. lots of people making big moves in in the pro scene but that whole history-making fight between your previous stablemate Raven Chapman versus Sky Nicholson. I mean, what an amazing opportunity, firstly. Yeah. But how do you see that fight going? It's a difficult one. I mean, Raven's relentless, so I think that she's going to put it on, the, on Sky and give her a hard night. I mean, we know that from her interviews that she's been putting out. She's going to give her a tough night. I think that if Raven can do it smartly, it, it'll be in Raven's favour. It just depends. Sky likes it her way, and she's good at what she does. Quite tricky at what she does. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's a southpaw, tricky, keeps it at her range. So she's just she could pick Raven off. That's the only thing. But I think the stronger one in there, stronger one in there is Raven. She just got to take it to her advantage. Not not give her time. Not give Sky time because if you give any Southpaw time, they're just going to pick you apart, aren't they? Yeah. Um, but it's brilliant fights for female boxing, and hopefully they make it an exciting fight in Saudi, not a boring fight because then it might take away women's boxing and being on a big massive card in Saudi. We don't want to see a boring fight. We want to see an exciting fight. So when we say. Yeah. I think I know what you mean, but when you say a boring fight, you mean a, do you mean a... So for me, I feel like it's going to be a really good technical fight. And I think that would be a great thing to display, to put on display in Saudi, because it, it's the first one, the first ever fight, and it's, OK, this is what we can do. But then there are people that say, oh, these technical fights are boring. The fight fans hate don't get me it, wrong, don't they? Like, not, no, it could be a technical fight, but not like a single shot fight. Do you know what I mean? Like... Not one punch kind of fight and then nothing coming off it. An exciting fight, like a te technical fight, can be, still be like exciting at the same time. 
obviously we don't want to see like just a brawl because that doesn't fight boxing does it but like a technical exciting fight from both of them i think that's the fight that we need to see yeah yeah i'm looking forward to that and i think uh, i think it's a great i mean there are many setups that could have been the first bout and that would have been would have done it yeah. justice but i think yeah i mean just the fact that the door's been kicked open yeah. And it's a quality fight, rather than it being a novelty fight. Yeah, exactly. And they want it. They've, they've put the graft in. To be fair, they've they've got themselves. They've climbed the ladder. They deserve it. It's not just like somebody just got it because they've been because of what they've already achieved prior, and like maybe on their amateur career, or whatever. They've they've built that. Raven's climbed the ladder. She's worked hard in the programs, and credit to her because she left Team GB similar sort of thing and she's worked hard and she's gone up the level and she's it's paid off for her so it's great to see and then you got sky who's a good role model for females as well and she's come from the australian setup so they're both two good pedigree fighters and it's going to be a great fight to watch it really will be and just lastly what does the kind of the future i know you said that you want to get out of the game quite quickly. I'd say, I'd say, I'd still, I'd say, I'm like, in my head I'm not 29 now, so 32 maybe max, giving it 32 max. In that time I want to, still want to have uh, a European title, a world title. So, I mean, I know it's a short space of time, but I'm like, <laughs> I was thinking, it has been short. But I'm still like, no, I want to fight for the European. So after this, I'm like, right, after we've won these battles, I want to, I want to get the European. I like your thinking, and I also like the fact that you've set a goal of, okay, because some people just don't know when to leave. <laughs> well, that's it, like, you know, that, I don't want, I mean, as much as Kate Taylor is the, uh, the, the women's boxing idol, I think I'm like, Kate, come on, some point you've got to retire, because you are, don't let it, like, I'm glad that she's got the, the victory, as much as I love Chantal Cameron as well, but she's got that legacy, of being an amazing female fighter and achieving what she's achieved from amateurs and professional, you don't want to see her lose it. I don't want to see her lose it. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, I don't want to be that person that doesn't know when to, to get out. And not only that, it's like I've sacrificed so much of my life, but so much of my life from such a young age. It's like there's another side to life as well where you can enjoy. I mean, I want to have a family, I want to have kids, but in my head, I can't really focus on any of that. Like, I can't really relate. None of that kind of has got any of my attention. Like, I'm just like, tunnel vision. Don't speak to me. Don't speak to me. I'm doing this. And that's that kind of thing. That's just not has to be my mindset because I haven't got time for anything else right now. Um, and I think, like, it would be nice to have that kind of life after boxing. I'll be ready. For, that's when I'll be ready to settle down and have a family and stuff like that. But at the moment, I'm like, I can't even that's not even in my mindset. Obviously boxing comes to an end and you've got to wave up what, what, when it, when's the right time. Yeah. I think it is an amazing thing that you want to pursue um, a career as a, a PE teacher. Or are you actually still? Yeah, I am still PE teacher. I am, yeah. No, that luckily, they, they have given, I asked for four weeks off on pay just to focus on my fight. So I had the six weeks holiday, which worked out quite well to focus on training. And these last four weeks then, They've allowed me to have a month off. So yeah, and I we mean, passed my foundation degree just last week, so that's all complete. So yeah, so I'll go back after the week after my final back at work. Wow, it's so amazing. So I take I take the belts to the kids and show the kids. I mean they they all watch me on they all watch my fights and they follow me on my miss, I've got you on uh, TikTok <laughs> and uh, stuff like that and I'm like oh no. Um so it, but it's great because I'm, you're making a difference to the, like them, and I made a difference. Like the, when I first went, there was an only like girls football team, and I created a girls football team, and it's just it's, it's nice to give back to and like make a difference to the girls that in sport as well. So I, and I, I enjoy it, and it gives me a bit of normality as well. Like being around all of these young people, what two or three pieces of advice would you give to to, to a young lady that? I'd just say that if uh, never give up on your dreams and your goals, however hard it gets and however many setbacks you have, you got to keep going. I think that, that must be my word of advice. Hey, great advice.